Sophia here from Clear Creates, Inspiring Journals and The Journal Club and I've got a really fun video for you today. We're going to be making sticker sheets. Now, in previous videos I have shared a little bit of my process of making sticker sheets but never the entire thing from start to finish. So this is going to be me spilling my sticker making secrets today because we're going to be going through drawing, designing the stickers, how I digitise and edit them on my tablet, how I draw the cut lines, how I cut them with my Cricut machine, everything. So you're going to get an insight into the entire process because it's something that I love to do. I love seeing a sticker sheet go from an idea to a real thing I can hold in my hand and use in my journal. So hopefully you'll enjoy that too. This video is coming out early for my journal club patrons because the sticker sheets that we're going to be making today, we'll get onto those in a minute, are going to be in the Medieval March kits for the journal club patrons. So if you're a patron watching this, you get to see how the sticker sheet in your kit is made. And if you're not a patron, you're still very welcome, of course. I hope you enjoy this video. Whether you are looking to make stickers yourself and kind of looking for some advice and tips or how other people do it, or whether you just like stickers and journal supplies and you're curious, I think this will be quite an interesting video, hopefully. First, a little bit about today's theme, medieval tavern core. Sounds kind of wacky if you don't know what I'm on about, but this is how it has started for me. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that about this time last year I went on holiday to Austria and I kind of became obsessed with all things wooden. Like outside people's houses there were piles of logs, old barrels, wooden signs, those wheels from old wagons and carts. And for some reason this just captured me and I couldn't stop thinking about it and I wanted to draw wooden patterns. So that's when I came home and drew the wood core sticker sheet that you can find on my shop. And I feel like that's just been lingering in the back of my mind. I just like that aesthetic, which kind of doesn't go with everything else that I like, because I tend to like nice bright colours or pastels and cute things, magical things, which they kind of don't go together, but we contain multitudes. Anyway, fast forward to now, there's a few things that have influenced me. I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy. If you've been playing that, you know it's like set in the 1700s. There's old, creaky, taverns with like barrels and just wooden things i'm just really getting back into that world again i've also been watching on tiktok this just sounds absolutely wild but it really works for me people who enjoy cleaning their houses to medieval tavern music like it's called bardcore and it's covers of songs but like with old like medieval instruments as if you're in an old tavern basically and for some reason, that alone has been the key factor in me going from someone who hates cleaning, doesn't want to tidy up, to a cleaning wench. <laughs> I just put that music on in the morning and I just start cleaning. I just feel like I'm cleaning my own little tavern. I really romanticise all the jobs and honestly, it's changed my life. So there you go. So basically, my imagination has been in a tavern for a long time, <laughs> thinking about barrels and cute cozy corners and I don't even like beer that much so I don't know why I'm stuck in a tavern but it's just this aesthetic has a hold on me right now. So long story short I had to make a sticker sheet to get it out because when I'm obsessed with something like this a particular aesthetic it just keeps ruminating until I turn it into a sticker sheet and I can hold it in my hand and I can put it in my journal so that's what I've done. So that's why we have this sticker sheet that we're making today it's gonna it's called Ye Old Tavern I'll give you a little snippet now and then we're gonna make the designs together. I started by illustrating some designs with my Faber-Castell brush pens in my sketchbook. I didn't have the idea to record until I'd already started outlining. Here's a little clip that I left in normal speed because it's me telling Will how much I like drawing wood and why. The thing I really love about drawing wood yeah. is it's dead forgiving because like, if I go wonky, it's just, it's just a wonky beam. Yeah. And like if I draw a line or whatever in the wrong place, it's like, well, on the wood pattern, there's a lot of lines and yeah, dots and so like, true, nothing it? has to be perfect. Yeah. I really like it. There you go. There's my little rambling straight from when I was drawing about why perfectly imperfect wood is a fun thing to illustrate. I do have a few different ways that I draw my stickers and deciding which one I use kind of depends on the theme, how I'm feeling, how much screen time I've had. So sometimes I draw directly onto my tablet. You'll see some of my stickers are completely digitally drawn the color and the black lines sometimes i'll draw 
the colour in my sketchbook like this but then I'll scan them in and I'll draw the black outline on my tablet so it's more of like a smooth digital line which is what I actually tried first for this ye old tavern sticker sheet so I've kind of outlined this one twice I did scan these in and then outline them on my tablet but I didn't like it I just felt like the lines weren't rustic enough even though I used a marker pen brush that's kind of uneven which I thought would give like a nice rustic feel I was like no I don't want them to be digital it just didn't work so now we're outlining them again but this time by hand so I use these fine liners and when I've done completely hand-drawn stickers like this where the colour and the black line is by hand in my sketchbook, I have two different ways that I'll turn them into stickers. Sometimes I'll scan them in to my tablet using my scanner and kind of use them that way. Sometimes though I feel like the scanner, even though I mess around with the settings, like it changes the colour in a way that I don't like. Um, sometimes it changes it in the way I really do like, so that's great, but for these ones, I actually used my other method which is kind of weird I take a photo of the drawing on my phone camera so I try to make sure that it's like a really clear crisp photo so you can see all the details and then I make the stickers from the photo instead of from a scan because sometimes I feel like that makes the colors more true to the actual drawing so that's what we did for these ones you'll see it a little bit later on Here's a close-up of me drawing the wood pattern on this barrel. I just find drawing these patterns really satisfying. And then in a minute, there's a bit of a real-time video of me drawing the lines on the tiles. Over the years of doing this I have really learned to trust the process because pretty much every single time I draw something just with the colours with the Faber-Castell brush pens because they're my favourite not sponsored um, I just think oh like this is a bit naff like I, I have a good idea or so I think and then I feel a little bit underwhelmed by how the drawing looks but then it's always when I add these outlines and little details where it really comes to life and I feel like that's just like the magic bit so now I've learned to trust the process I'll draw loads of things and then think these don't look very good but let's keep going and then once I add the outlines I end up really liking them so I would definitely say like to always see a drawing through even if you think it's not going to be good because it might turn out to be something that you love you just got to trust the process and go through the motions until it's completed Here's a look at the completed drawings. I have this little crest I made for my imaginary tavern which is called the Crossed Feathers and a barrel or keg on a tiled floor because I wanted to incorporate those colours. A wooden stein, a old sign for the tavern. I know ye oldy was never actually used back in the day but I just love it, it gives it a certain vibe. As I mentioned earlier, I've taken a photo of each of the drawings on my phone and then sent them to my tablet, edited them slightly just to make them as true as possible to the colours and now we're going to go on to creating the cut lines. There are quicker ways to create the cut lines. I mean, if you have an image of a drawing like I do, you could go on to like a free background remover tool to take the background off and then just draw a quick white line around the sticker for your cut line. Um, I'm really, really fussy when it comes to cut lines, so I take forever doing this. You could use the pen tool on Illustrator, but I use the brush tool because I really like to hand draw the cut line. I'm just fussy when it comes to stickers and how much white is around the edge. And I feel like the shape of the cut line actually really changes my enjoyment of the sticker so yeah i just take forever doing this but i find it really satisfying when i have the exact line that i like the next bit is kind of the hardest to explain but kind of the most important to how i actually get the image to become a sticker with like a cut line and a white outline 
So I'll try to explain it as best as I can, but this took me a long time of trial and error to kind of perfect a process that worked for me. The cut lines that you've seen me draw in, I copy all of those and paste them in place to a layer below the photos. I turn those into thick white lines and they're going to be the kind of white outline of the sticker. I also And I lock that layer and we just forget about it for a bit. I also copy and paste in place all of the lines on a layer above the photos and then I go I go to each one, copy the photo, click on the line that I've drawn and then press draw inside or shift D and paste the photo in there and it kind of creates a mask where it crops the photo to the exact shape that I've drawn. So say like where I drew the outline of the barrel, I then click the outline of the barrel, click draw inside paste the barrel photo in the exact place where it was before and it just cuts that image out into that shape so then when you add the layer underneath the white outline that I've drawn you've got your cut out sticker and you've got your white outline around the sticker. I rasterize each of the stickers so that they're you know not as massive because they're basically cropped images but I don't rasterize the, rasterize the outline because that makes it jagged on the Cricut. I hope this is making sense. And then I group each cutout image sticker with its white outline, so they're together. And then I arrange them onto my sticker sheet template like this. It's really fun. I spend ages moving them around and deciding like how many stickers should be on each and just the finishing touches. So what the color of the sticker sheet like blocks at the top and bottom should be, the title, and then obviously it's me. So I have to fill the rest of the space with these little doodles. I also forgot to mention a good tip is to work on a grey background for your sticker sheet template until the very last minute so that you can see where the cut lines are, make sure they're not overlapping and make sure that the doodles are kind of in the spaces and not on the stickers and then I turn it to white once it's completed and I love that bit because it just suddenly looks so official. And then my next super top tip, this is what I do, I export all of the backing, the title, the doodles, everything together as one image, save that. And then I turn off all the other layers and I keep the stickers and the white outlines only and I export that as a separate image. So you have to make sure that you have an image or sorry, a PNG of your backing sheet and then a PNG of the stickers themselves with the cut lines. That's really important. Then I upload both of these separately as print then cut images in my Cricut design space. And you've got another amazing secret coming your way that took me forever to figure out. This is how you get the Cricut to cut all the way through the backing sheet shape, but only a little bit, a kiss cut, on the actual stickers. I duplicate the backing sheet five times. It might be different with your Cricut settings, your paper thickness, but for me, five times is what's worked. I've experimented a lot. I attach those, make sure they're all in exactly the same place. And then I put the stickers on the top and attach those in place. So essentially the Cricut is going to cut the backing sheet out five times and only cut the stickers out once, which means that the stickers will be peelable, but the shape, shape of the sheet is going to be completely cut out of the paper. Once I've done that and I've duplicated it and attached them so I have two sticker sheets on one A4 page, I go ahead and I send it over to my printer and now it's time to print and cut. I'm printing this onto Evergreen Goods matte white sticker paper. That's not sponsored. I've just tried a lot over the years and that's my favorite one at the minute. And then once that's printed out, if you can have a little look at it. Ooh, it's coming to life. Then I'm gonna put it onto my Cricut mat and put it into the Cricut. This is my Cricut Maker 3 and it was gifted and it's amazing. I'm not just saying it, I do really love it. I have another Cricut Maker next to it, as you can see. So sometimes I use them both at the same time when I have a lot of orders or when I'm fulfilling the journal club kit orders and I have to make loads and loads of sticker sheets. I've used the washi sheet setting and as you can see, it's cut around these stickers really nicely and it's time to peel them off. And here we are, the finished sheets. I'm so happy this is pretty much exactly what I had in mind. The Tavern Court vibes have fully come to life and I can't wait to use these in my journal. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like making the stickers with me and seeing a little bit more about my process. Just remember, if you want to join the journal club, the medieval March deadline has passed as you have to join the month before, but we'll have another exciting theme coming up next month. So you can go to patreon.com forward slash Kia creates to find out more about that. And these stickers will be on my shop, kiacreates.co.uk forward slash shop. Um, probably within a couple of months, I'll have a drop soon. So I'll have a date to announce. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.